After watching smaller humans struggle with using water bottles and wasting lots of water in the process, I figured there had to be a better solution. I think the Dometic Go jug and tap could be one of those solutions. It could be considered expensive for a water jug and tap, but for me, the positives outweigh the expense factor. Water is a main priority when camping, so managing this precious resource is crucial. Welcome back. Today we're going to do a rundown on the Dometic Go 11 litre hydration jug and the Dometic water faucet or water tap, depending on which country you're in, how do you pronounce it. But yeah, two, two simple taps to turn it on. One simple tap to turn it off. Yeah, so if you don't want to spend the money on the actual, if you don't want to spend the money on the tap, the faucet, you know, you can just use the spigot tap here. If you want to put this spigot in that comes supplied with the 11 litre hydration tank, instructions, just disconnect that, take that lid off, Put the rubber stopper to the bottom with a hole in it when you on its side so the water can run out freely. Screw that on. And when you tip it up, there's actually a handle underneath here to grab if you want to tip it on its side. Like I said before, with, with that uh, max fill mark on the bottle when it's in the vertical position, I think it's to do with this when you're using the spigot, this bleed here, if you overfill it, obviously you undo that, the water's gonna run out. But it's, it's just 180 degrees to turn it on. It's got the on position there, you can see that. When you turn it off, it says off. And because it does have that recess on the back here, it's, it's quite easy to maneuver when it's on its, side there. Always remember to undo the bleed valve. You can see as soon as you shut the bleed valve it restricts the flow up to almost nothing so you might turn it off. Turn it on you think there's no water, undo the bleed valve, away we go. Just fill this right up. I'll put this in. You can see when you do this tap fully tight the, this bleed is at the top here it seems to work out that way so I'll just shut that off okay, with this tank full to the brim I'm just going to release the bleeds valve and see what happens that's clearly what happens if you pull that out that's that's what these fill line this max fill line is for so when you fill it up to that maximum line there you tip it on its side you don't get that happening which is not a big deal but I'll just let it out let it run I'll just let it run until it stops coming out of here and then I'll tip it up and see where the actual level is so it's about there Okay, if we take this out. I'm guessing that water level is about there, which is spot on with that mark there. If I stick my finger in until I just touch the water, finger in, which is that fill line. So what I do, if I'm gonna use this, if I use the pump, I'm gonna fill, I fill it up to the max just to get a bit more out of the, uh, to be able to carry more in the tank, just that little bit extra. If I'm just going to use the the um, water faucet, I can get an extra. There's one cup. I can get an extra five cups or 1.2 litres of water in there if I'm not using this, because that allows me to fill that right up. There's a small strainer at the end of this um, suction line inside the hydration jug. You can disconnect your tubing from underneath the lid here. 
if you if this tube gets blocked and the strainer gets blocked you can pull the cap off the strainer there's a tiny little tiny tiny little bit of it's almost really really fine mesh in there which is your strainer but you can clean that out if you need to pull that cap off but it's just a simple process of just pushing it back on these straps are easy enough to remove But to get them back in, I tend to use a flat blade just to help guide it in. Otherwise they're really hard to get in, really fiddly. As you can see, they don't always go in easy. Eventually you can get it. Sometimes even with a knife, it's a little bit hard to get back in, to be honest with you. But I see no reason to disconnect them. Because these straps are very handy. There's the recess. If you want to put a strap to tie it down, if you want to tie it to a surface, have a hook on the ground, on, the, on your surface here, have a hook, just tie it down. The big appeal for me with this jug is the large lid that allows for easy access to clean inside the jug and if needed, putting in large chunks of ice for those really hot days. The sticker that comes stuck to the jug upon purchase is easy to remove. using first thing is to charge the tap before unfortunately it's not USB-C but it's instead it's the old micro USB there is a micro USB to USB-A cable supplied there was no real way of telling the charge level but flashes to indicate charging the supplied hose that comes with this silicon hose is long enough to just to sit the tank on the ground and stick it on a standard table like that. There's, a, there's enough room there lengthwise. But an example over here, it's, it's not high enough. Like this is quite high. It's just not long enough. Some people have been known to add, add extensions to these tubes, but pump will work harder. Obviously it's trying to suck more. The suction hose from the tank to the tap, or well, this one in particular, is about this one right here is just under 600 mil, which is about 24, just under 24 inches long. If you want longer tubing, try using quarter inch or six mil internal diameter food grade silicon tubing. I don't like this quarter inch barb that sticks out. It's very vulnerable to snapping off if dropped or knocked. A recess fitting would be a better design. If this breaks, I'm not sure if I could repair it because it's totally sealed unit. Long term, I hope this pump lasts as the battery is totally enclosed inside the tap. If it does fail, I'll do an autopsy on this tap. This tap is great for washing hands and toothbrush without wasting water. The spout is chrome plated plastic. The light underneath the tap is a very nice touch and comes in super handy. What I found sometimes too is I forget to release the bleed valve. So you'll be pumped, it'll be, it'll, start out okay and it'll start to pull a vacuum and it'll start to pull pull the sides of the tank in or the jug in and the pump will start to labor and sometimes you'll think there's something wrong with it just not thinking and yeah it's just a matter of releasing the lead valve as you can see the tank starting to suck in put something flat here you can see how much the tank sucks in and you'll get a reduced flow. See the pump sort of struggling to suck. So once I, you watch the sides here, watch this when I release it. The sides will come out again and everything's good. It'll take a while for that to come back out again to where it originally was.
The flow rate can seem a little slow at times, but the fact that it will dispense water continuously for one minute once you start the pump, this 60 second equates to approximately one litre or four cups of water. It takes about 15 seconds to fill one cup of water or 250 mils. My intention of buying the system isn't to replace having to carry water. I've still got to carry water. It's just my main intention was to conserve water when dispensing the water. And if you're just doing a day trip, this is fine. Once you disconnect this here from the tank, you can run it for a few seconds just to purge that line because there's about 30 mils of water that will sit in, in this line and inside the pump itself. So it's just a good idea to get rid of that water. Try and, if you don't use it for a while, try and prevent any mold building up. I stuck the flat plate onto the jug with a supplied double-sided tape. I'm gonna use the plate with the, the round plate with the lip on it for future mounting somewhere else. You can leave the suction hose connected to the tap and pack away with supplied bag. 